Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. All right, so up and pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for the way you bless us every time we come. We have come today again, Lord, and we are praying you open our eyes to see what you have reserved and preserved for every one of us in your word in Jesus' name. As we are blessing us here, we pray that all over this city, all over this nation, all over this continent and beyond, you'll bless everyone studying with us in Jesus' name. Make us to see what we have never seen, to know what we did not know. And as a result of what we see, what we learn, and what we know, we pray, O oh Lord, your blessings will be abundant in every life in Jesus' name. Make your word a reach in our lives. That Lord, as a result of going so deep and so high in the study of your word, great will be the abundance of blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see And we're looking at Matthew chapter 6. From Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse 9 all through to verse 13. I'm sure you're opening your Bible. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's the Lord's prayer. I'd known that prayer from infancy. Because the church that my parents were going, they always ended with the Lord's prayer. They would do everything, continue, conclude the service. And then at the end of the whole thing, we'll stand up. And then we'll recite a father which art in heaven. And even though I wasn't born again, and even though in that church they didn't understand being born again, I knew this prayer word for word. Not only that, at home, that they will wake us up very early in the morning. And then we'll have family devotion. We didn't call it quiet time. It's believers that call it quiet time. A time with the Lord. When everything is quiet, we called it family devotion. And then we'll read from our church prayer book. And then we'll also see the reading for the day. And then we'll pray after the prayer. Again, we'll conclude with a Father which art in heaven. And so I knew this prayer, but I didn't know the meaning. I didn't know the structure. It's only when you become a child of God and God sends a spirit to your heart that Christ, Abba, Father. With that spirit of, the, of Christ crying Abba Father in your heart, you're able to then understand the first two words are Father. And then you understand it's a Father which is in heaven. It's a Father higher than the Father on earth as heaven is higher than the earth. And then it says, Hallowed be thy name. When we were very young, my father said, no, the name of the family. And then make sure that that name is honored. When you go to school, and when you play with the children, never do anything that will bring disrepute to the name of your father that you see here. I, I never translated that to understand. If the heavenly father is higher than the earthly father, and the earthly father said, never do anything that will bring disrepute, disgrace, dishonor to the name of your father here on earth. I never interpreted it to mean my father who is in heaven, a father who is in heaven. We need to hallow his name, honor his name, glorify his name, that we never do anything 
anytime, anywhere that will dishonor or disgrace or bring disrepute to that name. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. My earthly father had, you know, a little space that he called his own. It was his kingdom. And nobody could infiltrate and nobody could, uh, nobody could intrude. This belongs to my earthly father. His farm was fenced around. That was his kingdom. And his house was fenced around. That was his kingdom. His property was fenced around. That was his kingdom. Now I understand. The earthly father had a literal kingdom. And he never allowed anything to infiltrate or intrude. Now we have a heavenly father. His kingdom covers the whole earth and the whole of heaven and the whole creation, the whole universe. Now I understand that my heavenly father is much, much greater in his power, in his authority, in his kingdom than the earthly father. And then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know, every time I, I, when I was very young, I did something that was against what my father had said. My father would say, what did I tell you before? And then I'll, you know, I'll begin to tremble because I knew. Anytime I went against the will of my earthly father, I knew that his cheek was coming. Punishment was coming. Now I understand. My heavenly father chose a will. And he wants me as his child to obey that will. And anytime I go against that will, whether it's intentional or it is not intentional, there is a stick of chastisement, the rod of chastisement. And now I'm learning because I learned it at home. In fact, I learned it so quick because I knew if my earthly father ever discovered that this was his will and I contradicted it, I knew the consequence. Now I know the eternal consequence of contradicting the will of our Heavenly Father. And therefore it's my desire. And it's my, it's my desire as well as my ambition that thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day a daily bread. You know, I never went to a stranger to get my breakfast. Even in difficult times, even at the times of farming, I just believed my, my earthly father that he'll have enough to provide breakfast for me. And in the night, that is the previous night, I never thought, what am I going to eat tomorrow morning? That wasn't my problem. It wasn't my headache. I knew that my earthly father, I knew that he will provide breakfast, whatever it will take. And it always happened. I'm looking back now since I was very young. There was never a day my earthly father was not able to provide bread. And now I'm a Christian. I have a heavenly father. And I'm thinking now that my, my heavenly father, he did more than what my earthly father has done. Three million Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. They went every morning, give us this day a daily bread. And it never failed. And if God did not fail at that time, God is not going to fail today. Yeah. He will supply your need. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, when I was very young and I was at home with daddy, with my father. When I was eating in the morning, let's say Monday morning, I never thought about Tuesday morning. I never thought about Wednesday. I just knew today this is enough for me. When tomorrow comes, and tomorrow will take care of itself. And good enough, when Tuesday came, we're just again at the time of breakfast sat at the breakfast table. And sure enough, the breakfast came. Because day by day, give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. When I was very young, I was very conscious of, you know, whenever I did something wrong... Especially if, uh, you know, I'd done that thing wrong and then my mother said, all right, wait. I tell daddy when he comes. Because you see, mother could not discipline us children. She couldn't uh, say, okay, this is what you have done. You know, we'll try to, you know, when I was very young, being the firstborn in the family and also a boy, I said, mama, don't do that. If you do that to me and then I would drop the stick as, okay, your daddy will come. 
And then when daddy comes, I knew. I knew that daddy, I knew that my mother was going to tell daddy something. And therefore, I will go to daddy. I will greet him, you know, more than, more than before. And then I will, you know, try to say some things. And I say, daddy, you know, I did something. You will not like it when you're here. I'm sorry. Forgive us this day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those that trespass against us. And then my daddy will say, what did you do? Why did you do that? I'm so sorry. And if I can just go first to my daddy, before mommy goes to tell him, I was sure of forgiveness. Now I'm learning. Now I'm learning that the heavenly father is more compassionate than my earthly father. And because he's compassionate and merciful and loving, he, can, he will always forgive. Just go to him and then you say, forgive us our debts as we well forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. I told you before, my father had a farm and then we'll walk from the house and we'll walk to that farm and my father will lead the way. And he would always say, don't go any other place. There is a kind of plant on the road that if it sticks to your body, it will give you itching in your, in your skin. And therefore my daddy would say, don't go that way. Don't go this way. Go this way. He was leading us. He will not lead me to the pit. He will not lead me to a pitfall. But he will lead me the right way. Now I understand. My heavenly father knows the way. You have not walked this way before. And because you have not walked this way before, he knows the way. That's why you are praying to him. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom kingdom and the power and the glory you know when i was young it just so happened that you know my father my father was never afraid of anybody in fact uh, you know i can tell you some stories my father uh, that, that man was clever he's, you know he's dead now there was a time uh, listen to this you've never had this one from me do you want to hear yeah. you know my father was selling apart from the farming and apart from all the things he did, he was also selling clothes. And sometimes he'll sell clothes to people. And after selling the clothes, then he'll go back to ask for his money. This particular man, my father asked him and said, where is my money? And the man said, don't talk about that again. And, you know, my father felt, this is my territory. This is my kingdom. This is my work. And this man is trying to take what belongs to me from me. And, man, and my father said, no, today you will give me this money. And so the man went inside his house and brought a bottle. Inside that, bo that bottle, you have rings. That is to do rings. And the man was doing the thing like this and poured it on the ground. My father knew what the man was going to do. The man was going to put one of those rings and put it in hand and slap my father. Immediately when the man put the ring on the ground, my father took the ring and put it in hand and wanted to slap him. <laughs> and then my father said, my little boy, you need to learn that this is my territory. And the man was trying to take my territory and I will not allow him. Now I understand. My earthly father had a territory. He had a kingdom. But the heavenly father has a kingdom. Thine is the kingdom. And the devil will try to take that kingdom from him but he cannot. The demons will try to take that kingdom from him, but he can, they cannot. And then all the powers of darkness in this world, they'll try to take that kingdom away from the heavenly father, but they cannot. I belong to an heavenly father. He has a kingdom. He has authority. And he has power. And this whole earth belongs to my father. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. My father that I'm talking about now, his kingdom is over. He's dead. He's no more here. He's gone. His kingdom, his power, his authority was just for a time. But that doesn't give me sadness. I have an heavenly father. His kingdom is forever and ever. Thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory. How long? That's your father. What are you afraid of? Why will you ever be afraid when you have such a father? And today we're looking at one of the prayers. Before I look at that, I want you to look at this prayer again. And see the structure in this prayer. The prayer has two parts. The first part, 
God and his glory first. And then the second part, man and his needs. There are three requests in the first part, that is, in the first part, that belongs to the Almighty God. Number one, hallowed be thy name. Number two, thy kingdom come. Number three, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's the part belonging to God, God and his glory. Now we're looking at the second part who belongs to man and his needs. It also has three parts. Number one, give us this day our daily bread. Number two, forgive us our debts as we we'll forgive our debtors. Number three, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. As you look at the three belonging to God and the three belonging to man, you match them together. Number one, you can see on the side of God that God is a father and we need to honor his name. Number two, not only that is a father, he's a king and he has a kingdom. Number three, concerning God is a master and his will must be done. Come to the side of man. Man, the believer in particular, is a child of the father, a child in the family. And because he's a child in the family, that's why he has number one, give us this day a daily bread. He expects the father to give him the daily bread. Number two, is a subject of the king. And because he's a subject of the king, that's why he will say, I've offended the king. I've not really done his will. That's why he's praying the second prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then number three, this heavenly father is not only a king, he's a master. And because he's a master, he leads in the way. When you think about the prayer then, especially this second part of the prayer, is asking number one for bread. Number two is asking for forgiveness. Number three is asking for guidance. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look at those requests again. Number one, daily bread. That's for the present. Give us this day. Present tense, a daily bread. Forgiveness. That's for the past. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then when it says lead us, guide us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, it's talking about the future. Look at the prayer, so comprehensive and so complete. For the present, bread. For the past, forgiveness. And then for the future, guidance or leading. Not only that, for the soul, for the body, and then for the spirit. Give us this day a daily bread that's to nourish your body. And then it says that he will forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. He's talking about your soul and your spirit. And then lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. What a great prayer this is. As you look at the prayer and then you plan your own praying. You understand then how your prayer should touch the present, the past and the future. How your prayer should touch the body, the soul and the spirit. As you look at the prayer we're looking at today, please uh, join, uh, look at this in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 9. Verse 11 rather, give us this day our daily bread. That's what we're looking at today. Give us this day our daily bread. Number one, can you see the time? The time. This day. Number two, can you see the tone? It's like a child is talking to the father with which kind of tone? And then number three, the trust. The trust. Give us this day our daily bread. When do you ask for that? That's in the morning. That means that you as a child of God, when you wake up in the morning, you'll not just rush out. The Lord is teaching us to we'll spend some time with the Lord in prayer. And part of the request you are making is give us this day. You're not going to spend the whole day and then at night, when the, when the day is over, say give us this day. It's early in the morning, the time. Number two, the tone. It's like a child asking the father. And you know the tone matters when you're asking something from the father. You cannot shout on the father. You cannot bully the father. You cannot kind of, uh, uh, how do I say, you cannot uh, uh, say it in a very rash and impolite voice. The tone has to be a tone that is tender, that is yielded. A child talking to the father. And then the trust. 
That means to trust the Lord that this is what he will do. Give us this day our daily bread. Can you see something here, number one? There's no covetousness here. Just give us this day our daily bread. All we need for today is what we're asking. We're not asking for what the whole world will eat. We're not asking for what the whole city will eat. All we're asking, forgive us this day our daily bread. Can you see something here? Give us our daily bread. Not give us their daily bread. Give them what belongs to them. Give us what belongs to us. That's the prayer. Give us this day, not their daily bread. We're not asking for what belongs to other people. We're not covetous. We don't want to cheat other people. All we're asking for is what belongs to us. Give us this day our daily bread. There is no competition with other people. You know the people of the world. You know the way they take business. They say trade is warfare. That means the people of the world, they don't care whether you have anything or not. They want to have and possess everything. They want to have the whole territory. For the child of God, trade is not warfare. There is no competition. I want to live and I want other people to live. All I'm asking for, give us this day our daily bread. And it's not just me, give me my daily bread. Give all of us, give all of us. We want other people to live. We want other people to enjoy the privilege the Lord has given them. We're not angry, we're not envious, we're not jealous. Whatever God is doing for other people, give us this day our daily bread. You know the people of the world, the way they do business. And the way they want their daily bread, they say one man's gain is another man's loss. They say, I don't care what you lose. All I care for is what I gain. No, that's not the spirit of this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. The Lord is teaching us the more excellent way. And the more excellent way is live and let others live. There is no selfishness in this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm not grudging you for what you have. And you're not grudging me for what I have. I want you to have what belongs to you. And I want to have what belongs to me. There's contentment in this prayer. Contentment means all I need, Lord. Just today, that's, that's all right for me. I'm not trying to amass anything. I'm not trying to heap up anything. I'm not trying to have the whole world to myself. All I need is what I need for today. You cannot live in two houses the same time. You cannot sleep on two beds the same time. And you cannot eat more than your stomach the same time. Give us this day our daily bread. I pray that God will reveal his mind, his will, and his thoughts to us as we study this prayer in Jesus name we're dividing the study to three parts number one the provision of sustaining bread for the body the provision of sustaining bread for the body number two the promise of spiritual bread for believers the promise of spiritual bread for believers number three the prayer for sufficient bread of blessings the prayer for sufficient bread of blessings. We'll come to number one. The provision of sustaining bread for the body. In Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 11. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Now you need to understand that when Jesus used the word bread, he used that word in a very, very broad sense. Because the bread, in, in its very expressive meaning, means, number one, food. It means nourishment. It means necessities to support your body, to sustain your body, and to strengthen your body. It means all temporal blessings suitable for our earthly existence. All that we need to keep the body in health and vigor. That, that the bread denotes everything necessary to sustain life is seen from the use of the word in the scripture. Look at the way the scripture uses the word bread. So you don't limit it to just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we're reading from verse 10. Now, he that ministereth see to the sower, both, both minister bread for your food. So you understand the primary meaning, the first meaning, the initial meaning is the food. 
bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And let's look at another passage in Matthew chapter 15. And you'll see the way Jesus himself used the word bread. So you will not limit it to just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 25. Matthew chapter 15 verse 25 Then came she and worshipped him saying Lord help me But he answered and said It is not meat, it is not suitable It is not right to take the children's bread And cast it to dogs The woman was asking for healing For deliverance for her daughter And Jesus called that healing Or that deliverance bread It is not it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Do you see what Jesus called bread here? Healing deliverance being made whole that's bread in the language of jesus christ let's look at john chapter 6 john chapter 6 reading from verse 33 for the bread of god is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world now you see Jesus Christ is using the word bread in another way now. And he's referring to himself because he's the giver of eternal life, everlasting life. Ordinarily what does bread do? It sustains your life. It gives us strength for living. But then there, there's a life that is more than the physical, the physical life, the human life. And it is eternal life, spiritual life. And Jesus said, he is a bread of life. Look at that in verse 3 again. For the bread of God is he. There's a man. There's the Lord Jesus himself. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Verse 35, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. So then you understand when he says, give us this day, our daily bread is going beyond just the ordinary food. But let's see that the Lord had made provision for our sustenance, even from the earliest time, from the time of creation. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, Genesis chapter 1, we're reading from verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and, mu and multiply. You will be fruitful. Yeah. And you will multiply. Yeah. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat for you it shall be for meat which means that God actually provided from the earliest of times for our food and therefore we can safely pray that he should give us this day our daily bread as we come to the new testament you'll find that paul the apostle assured even the unbelievers that we depend upon the lord for our daily sustenance acts of the apostles chapter 14 acts chapter 14 reading from verse 15 and saying sirs why do ye these things we also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that, that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their, own, in their own ways nevertheless he left not himself without witness in that he did good 
and give us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. You see the provision of the Lord, and He's still providing for His son today. He will provide for you. For the children of Israel, there were millions of them in the wilderness. How did the Lord provide for them? Look at Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 4. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. You see that? Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the Lord Jesus is teaching us the prayer to give us this day our daily bread and we need to understand this because you see there are many people that don't understand the word of God when it says give us this day our daily bread their interpretation is maybe he wants us to sit at home not do anything at all and just where we're sitting then give us this day our daily bread but look at this now he rained bread from heaven and anytime, it, anytime rain falls, you still have to do something to be able to gather together that rain, the drops of rain in your bucket. And then to take it home, you still have something to do. Look at it in this verse 4. And the people shall go out and gather. And the people shall go out and gather. Give us this day our daily bread does not mean we do nothing. We'll still have to go out and gather. And you'll discover that all through your Bible. You know, there are some people that feel that if Adam and Eve had not sinned, we would not be walking. You think so? If Adam had not fallen into sin, we'll just sit at home. Nobody will do anything. Yes, we'll do something. Don't you remember? He said, you will subdue the earth. That's work. You have dominion on the fish and on the sea, on everything that's work. And also you will turn and chill the land. Even the garden of Eden, that's work. Yes, you still have to do something. It's only that after the fall, sweat came or sweating came and the difficulties came. And the thorns were growing and you have to remove the thorns. But even before the fall, you still have to do something. When God provided the manna for the children of Israel in the wilderness, they said to go out and gather. And then it says that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Now, after this time, when they came to the land of Canaan, do you know what happened to them? Notice the word gather. Go out and gather. Go out and gather. When God provides manna, you go out and gather. And when the manna stops and then it brings crops now, all you still do is go out and gather. We're looking at Joshua chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 12. Joshua chapter 5 verse 12. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. The manna ceased after they had eaten the old corn of the land. They didn't need that again and the Lord had told them that when you get to the land the manna will stop and then you'll change your to your eating. You'll be eating the corn of the land. What are you going to do? You've been gathering manna. You'll also gather the corn of the land. Exodus chapter 23 verse 10. Exodus chapter 23 verse 10. Six years shall thou sow thy land and shall gather in the fruits thereof. It's still the word gather. If it's manna, you still go out and gather. If it's a crop on your field, you still go out and gather. Leviticus chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 3. Leviticus chapter 25, we're looking at verse 3. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. That's all. And gather in the fruit thereof. You see, even when God provides manna, he doesn't want laziness. He doesn't want you to just sit in the house and feel that food will come. Give us this day our daily bread. How does he give us? We go out and gather. We get some job. And then while doing that job, then there's provision for Psalm 104, Psalm 104. And you see what he does today, how he provides for us. And now he expects us that we will make use of that provision. Psalm 104, I'm reading from verse 23. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. That's how he provides for us. He gives us the job to do. 
And if you don't have any job, you are getting that job tonight. And then when you have the job, then you go out and you gather. Well, if it's manna, go out and gather. If it's a field, a farm, go out and gather. If it's a job, go out and gather. Anything that you're doing to be able to honestly earn a living, that's the provision of the Lord. And you see this, verse 23, I'm reading it again. Man goeth forth unto his work. It's not good for a man, for a woman to just sit at home, not doing anything. Man goeth forth, goeth out to his work and to his labor until the evening oh lord in verse 24 how manifold are thy works in wisdom as thou made them all the earth is full of thy riches the earth is full of thy riches that's how he provides for us but the fullness of the earth we go out and gather look at verse 27 these wait all upon upon thee they, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. He gives them their meat. Whether they are animals or they are men or birds or reptile, whatever. He gives us our meat. But you know, even the animals, they don't just stay in one place. They hunt. They search. They go forth. They go out and gather. And yet it is still the Lord providing for them. Give us this day our daily bread. In verse 28, thou givest them. It says that thou, that thou givest them, they gather. You see that? That thou givest them, they gather. The earth is full of its riches. And it promises it's going to bless us and is going to provide for us but we go out and gather and then he says thou openest thine hand and they are filled with good but then we have to do our part and go out and gather the blessings of God will be yours in Jesus name you see this prayer it expresses our personal need our conscious dependence upon God our quiet contentment and childlike trust and faith in the heavenly father because God has made adequate provision for all needful necessary things in our lives all we do now is just do the will of God go out and gather and when you go out you'll have enough to gather I said you'll have enough to gather because God gives if you look at the word of God it says God giveth all life and breath and all things it says the living God giveth us richly all things to enjoy it says every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father he giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not how much more shall your heavenly father your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him my father giveth you the true bread from heaven he that spared not his own son but delivered him for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us how many things all things they are yours already in jesus name point number two the promise of spiritual bread for believers let's come back to matthew chapter 6 verse 11 matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 11 give us this day our daily bread give us this day our daily bread you know that whenever jesus said anything you cannot limit jesus because jesus is you know he speaks very deep and you really have to compare what he says here with other things he said in other places for you to know the extent of the message the depth of the message the height of the message the ramifications of the meanings of what he has said give us this day our daily bread look at john this is another passage talking about what jesus said john chapter 6 we're looking at verse 25 john chapter 6 verse 25 and when they had found him on the other side of the sea they said unto him rabbi teacher master when camest thou hither Jesus answered them and said Verily, verily, I say unto you Ye seek me not because Ye saw the miracles But because ye did eat of the loaves The loaves of bread And were filled Look at what Jesus said now Labor not for that meat which perishes Labor not for that meat which perishes It's telling us something When he says give us this day our daily bread He said don't just labor for the meat that perishes don't just labor for the bread you will eat and then go to the toilet and then you dispose of that thing 
so that it doesn't stay in your stomach. The, the meat or the food or the bread that perishes. Labor not for the meat that perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father sealed. That means that when Jesus said, give us this daily bread, he was looking beyond ordinary food. Because he himself said, if you're limited to ordinary food, that's a meat that perishes. But you need to labor for, I need to pray for, I need to desire the meat that endures unto life eternal. In fact, we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the spiritual bread. The spiritual bread for believers. I'm reading from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. It's going beyond the ordinary manner. It's going beyond the food they ate in their mouth for the body. It's not talking about the spiritual food, the spiritual meat. And then he said, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock which followed them. And that rock was Christ. You see that it goes beyond the ordinary physical rock that they saw and struck. And then water came out. It's just a symbol. It's something to lead you from point one to point number two. It's something to lead you from level one to level number two. That you will understand there's something beyond the bread you eat. Give us this day a daily bread. It's talking about in the extension. In the depths of it, in the height of it, the spiritual bread that the Lord has provided for us. It will be yours in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 33, Isaiah chapter 33, we're looking at verses 15 and 16. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15, verse 16. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He's talking about the believer. And then he says, He that despiseth the gains of oppressions, that shaketh his sons from holding up bribes, and that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. It's telling us something now. When you are going to have this daily bread, it will not be through bribery and corruption. When you are going to have this daily bread, it will not be through the gain of oppression. If you're going to have this daily bread from the Lord, it will not be through seeing blood and then just looking at evil and not minding whether evil is done or not. It will be in a righteous way. In verse 16, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of the rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. It's telling us then that it's not just ordinary bread breakfast lunch and dinner he's talking about something deeper something higher something greater let's look at isaiah chapter 55 from verse 1 isaiah 55 verse 1 oh everyone that thirsteth come ye to the waters he that has no money come ye by and eat obviously this one is talking much more about the physical natural thing because it says come without money and then buy you come with your faith and receive from the Lord. You come with consecration, commitment, humility, and you receive from the Lord. It says, Ye come by wine and milk without money, without price. Obviously, this is not talking about the wine they drink in the world, because the wine they drink in the world, you have to buy that with money. But this one, come by this wine and milk. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. You understand then the milk here is not the milk you are thinking about that is inside a container. This one is the word. This one is a spiritual blessing. And it says you buy this one without money. Then it goes on to say in verse, uh, in verse 2, Wherefore do you spend your money for that which is not bread? 
and your labor for that which satisfies not hacking diligently unto me eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness it's talking about the food for the soul and the bread you eat in the morning that's for the body but there's another kind of bread spiritual bread this one is for the soul incline your ear come unto me here and your soul shall live the physical bread is to make the body live but the spiritual bread is to make your soul to live here and your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david that's why it now says in verse 6, Seek the Lord while, it's, while it may be found. Call your pony while it's near. This is to seek the spiritual bread, eternal bread. That is the kind of bread that will give you life eternal. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will, he will have mercy on him. God will have mercy on us. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon no matter how many sins anybody has committed when you come to the lord and you're seeking for this bread that gives life eternal he will give it to you for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not hither not hither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud so is so that it may give the seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be you see that it's talking about the bread that we get through the corn or through the uh, through the wheat or whatever and now it now transfers it to the word of god so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto i sent it the word of god will prosper in your life in jesus name and now you see what the lord is telling us he's telling us that this bread of life must be yours so that this spiritual bread that is for believers will come in your life it will do something definite in your life in jesus name john chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 47 john chapter 6 verse 47 it tells us verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me has everlasting life i am the bread of life give us this day our daily bread and that is when you have christ this bread of life you'll have eternal life your spiritual life and that's why you need if you have not been born again you need to tell the lord oh lord i need this eternal this eternal life and i need this bread of life give us this day you should not wait until tomorrow today is the day of salvation the day of life eternal if you are born again already you need this bread again give ever more give us this bread in verse 49 it says your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead it says if you limit yourself to the physical natural bread it doesn't go too far it cannot give you life eternal it cannot make you to live forever you will eat that one and die but this is the bread in verse 50 which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats this bread, he shall live forever. You will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. They didn't understand. So Jesus had to explain to them in verse 63. It is the spirit that quickness. The, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are life, their spirit, and their life. And if you want to have this life, then you invite Christ into your heart. You understand then when we're talking about this life we're talking about this bread we're talking about that kind of bread the lord jesus christ himself as well as his word now what does this bread what does it do a number of things number one bread it is bread for the spiritual life bread for the spiritual life uh, we've read a part of that already but look at that again john chapter 6 verse 51 
It says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. That is the bread of life. And when you have him, when you believe him and you trust him, and you have him in your heart, he says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. That should be your prayer then saying, Lord, give me this bread forevermore. And then number two, this bread is for spiritual growth bread for spiritual growth it's when we eat the normal food the physical food the natural food that's when we grow physically and if we're going to grow spiritually we need this bread this word of god first peter chapter 2 verse 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 2 it says and, and as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby do you know that this bread we're talking about which is the word of life is also for growing faith growing faith you know the body grows when you take the normal food the normal bread the natural bread but your faith grows when you take this spiritual bread we're looking at romans chapter 10 verse 17 romans 10 verse 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of god faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god i want you to read it uh, this way uh, i want you to omit that comma there I actually you need to understand that in the original bible in greek there were no punctuation marks no commas uh, no no semicolon and all those uh, punctuation marks and therefore if you remove that punctuation marks so then faith coming by hearing and hearing faith coming by hearing and hearing the word by the word of god you see when you hear and hear and hear and hear and you swallow it and you believe it and it mixes with your thoughts your mind your imagination then your faith will grow that's why we come here so that we can take of this bread of life this bread also gives strength to the inner man you're not just body you have a soul you have a spirit you have an inner man and if you're going to grow in the inner man you need this bread that's why you are praying oh lord evermore give us this bread Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man for you to be courageous for you to be more than a conqueror for you to be unintimidated by anything or frightened not frightened by anything for your inner man to be very strong you need to be eating this spiritual bread constantly and then this bread when you are eating it it is for your spiritual labor and work spiritual labor and work you need to work for the lord yeah as for your yeah, as fellowship leader you need to work for the lord zona leader um, coordinator group coordinator pastor overseer whatever we need to work for the evil members of the church and for us to actually have the strength to labor and the strength to be able to do the work the lord has given us we need the spiritual food we need to be digesting this word give us this day our daily bread if you are not reading the word of god if you are not understanding the word of god if you are not meditating on the word of God how can you be strong for the work the Lord has given you to do in a first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord how can a weak man do that anemic how can he do that a person that is you know almost fainting how can he do that a fellow that is not strengthened by the word of god how can he do that if you're going to do the work of god and you're going to labor tirelessly you need this word this bread of life every time therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast be unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the lord the lord will, he will reward you 
And then for you to have a sanctified heart, a sanctified life, a sanctified behavior, sanctified through and through, living the sanctified life, the holy life, consistently. You need this bread of life. You know, you find some food out yourself. I got sanctified some years ago. I don't know what happened to me. I'm not uh, having the sanctification again. I can tell you what happened to you. You are not taking the bread of life every day. You are not feasting at the table of the Lord every day. You are missing your breakfast. You are missing your food, your spiritual food. And because of that, you became weak. When temptation came, there was no strength to overcome. And when the people came to maybe irritate you or whatever, uh, there was no stamina within for you to be able to stand. The holiness of heart just evaporated because you were not taking this meal, spiritual meal, every day. If you want to retain the sanctification, the holiness, the purity of life, and the purity of heart, it is by going into the world every day, applying need to yourself. Evermore give us this bread. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 32 Acts chapter 20 verse 32 and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that's how you keep your experience your experience of salvation your experience of sanctification and holiness your experience of the baptism in the Holy Ghost and then you are born in the fire of the Lord is born in your heart every time it is because you are giving yourself to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified and that's why as you realize how important this bread of life is you are telling the Lord I'll never miss a this a bread anymore this word anymore i'm going to always give myself to this this will be my prayer in john chapter 6 john chapter 6 we're looking at verse 34 john chapter 6 verse 34 then said they unto him lord evermore give us this bread can we all say that together lord evermore give us this bread can we say that again And that means every day you are not going to be missing your quiet time. You are not going to be missing reading the Bible. So that the word of God, the study of the word will make you strong. In fact, you'll say, no Bible, no breakfast. Why don't you write that down? No Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no breakfast. That means as the breakfast is going to strengthen your body, then the Bible is going to strengthen your soul and strengthen your faith and strengthen you, strengthen your stamina, your spiritual stamina. No Bible, no breakfast. Can we say that together? Let's look at Job chapter, chapter 23. Job chapter 23. I'm reading verse 12. Chapter 23 of Job, verse 12. In verse 12, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Give us this day our daily bread. You go beyond the physical food, the natural food, and then you say, I'm not going to be missing out on the watch of God. In the morning, no, no Bible, no breakfast. In the evening, listen to this, no scripture, no sleep. No scripture no sleep no scripture no supper no scripture no sleep write that down that means when you get back home before you sleep then you remember i've not i've not read the scriptures no scriptures no sleep i cannot just go to sleep like that that's why some of those people have those nightmares but you see when you have the word of god in the morning you wake up no bible no breakfast and then in the evening no scripture no sleep then you'll find you are going to be strong from this day you'll be strong in jesus name we come to point number three the prayer for sufficient bread of blessings the prayer for sufficient bread of blessings we're back in matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 11 matthew chapter 6 verse 11 give us this day our daily 
bread. Here is a prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray. And now we have learned that this daily bread is more than, you know, just the, necessary, the food that we eat. It's much, much more. It's talking about the blessings of God upon our lives. And this blessing, uh, people have prayed for it from the time of Genesis. Genesis chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 20. Genesis chapter 28. We're looking at it from verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat. You see that? Will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord, this, uh, then shall the Lord be my God. This God will be our God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenths unto thee. Of all that thou wilt give me, I will surely give the tenths unto thee. You know, it's asking, he was asking for bread. If he will give me bread to eat, that means he will, if he will sustain me. If he will provide for me. And then if he will keep me alive. Keep me happy. Keep me righteous. Keep me holy. And keep me healthy. And provide all necessary bread for me. So I'm, I'm what I ought to be. When I come back. I'm going to be a blessing to the house of God. You'll be a blessing to the house of God. In Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 34. We're looking at verse 9. Psalm 34. Looking at verse 9. Oh fear the Lord. Ye saints. For there is no want, there is no lack uh, to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall never lack, shall never want any good thing. Good things are coming your way. Yeah. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking girl. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. His ears are open to their cry. When you cry to the Lord asking for this abundance of the blessings of the Lord, it will come. Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It says uh, there is no problem with God, and there is no disappointment in God. It says trust in the Lord, and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says surely, verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You wake up in the morning, you have your quiet time. You remember no, no, no Bible, no breakfast and then you read a portion of the Bible you take in the bread of life and then you pray unto the Lord every request you make according to the word of God the Lord will answer you delight yourself in the Lord and then he gives you the desires of your heart commit thy way unto the Lord before you go out in the morning you commit your way unto the Lord you remember man goeth forth unto his work and then he returns in the evening everything you are going to do during the day you say Lord I'm going now today give me this day my daily bread then it says trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass in verse 6 and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday rest in the Lord wait patiently for him fret not thyself because of him that that prospereth in his way that is when you go out in your work uh, don't don't be jealous of the people don't be envious of the people that do evil things you do the right thing and your own blessing will stay with you then it tells us in verse 25 it says i've been young and now i am old yet have i not seen the righteous forsaken he'll never forsake you no his seed begging bread you will not beg and your children will not beg some 68 some 68 i'm reading from verse 9 
Psalm 68 verse 9 Thou O God did send a plentiful rain whereby thou, thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou O God has prepared of thy goodness for the poor. The Lord has prepared his goodness for you. But you know, we're going to jump down to a verse. I won't tell you the verse now, but before you can get that verse, you have to be in verse 11. Because you see many people, they don't understand. They just open the Bible and they read a particular verse and they try to claim the blessings of the Lord, the blessing in that verse. And the Lord is saying, why did you jump? Why didn't you read some verses before and do those things and when you do those things then i will give you what you are reading about look at verse 11 the lord gave the word and great was a company of those that published it the lord is saying that you need to get involved we we'll call it evangelism, we'll call it soul winning, we we'll we'll call it witnessing, we we'll call it giving your testimony. The Lord gave the word and great was the company of the people that published it. It is when God sees that you are faithful in what concerns him and you are bringing him glory and you are bringing souls into his kingdom. Then he'll give you verse, verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Loads of blessing loads of benefit loads of the abundance of the lord loads of achievement and success when we are faithful to god and we are faithful to the commission he has given us the lord gave the word and great was the company of those that published it then we can say blessed be the lord who daily loadeth us with benefits even the god of our salvation he will prosper you the lord will bless you in Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58, we're reading there from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 9. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity you see there's a condition for the blessing the lord says yes i want to answer you i want to provide job for the jobless i want to give the daily bread to those who are hungry i want to satisfy the desires of my people but he says if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke that is if we bring other people on the yoke under oppression Maybe you did it unintentionally. Maybe you didn't know. But they're telling you that, you know, this thing you have done is like, you know, putting a yoke on me. This thing you have done is like putting some restrictions on me. I will not allow me to live my life free. There you say, oh, I'm sorry about that. And then once you take away that yoke that you put on other people, it may be your wife. That is saying, my, my husband, you know, the way we're living in this house, I'm not free. It's like, you know, I'm caged. It's like a yoke. Oh, I'm sorry, my wife. I didn't know that. It's good you told me. And then you put all that yoke away. Or it may be the husband telling the wife, you know, the way you just police me around. You don't, you know, I'm not free. It's like, you know, I'm a slave. Even I'm the husband. Once you take that yoke away, and that's what it says in verse 9. Look at it. Then shall thou come, and the Lord will shall answer, and thou shall cry and he will say here am I if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke and the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity and then in verse 10 if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday there is an if there you see if you draw yourself out to your neighbor that is so pour yourself out to your neighbors you are not selfish you are not holding on to anything you are not saying give me this day my daily bread let the rest of the world go hungry that doesn't concern me but give us this day our daily bread i want to be happy i want them to be happy too i want to be healthy i want them to be healthy too i want to be satisfied i want them to be satisfied too i want them to be blessed i want to be blessed too give us together give us this day our daily bread if you are not selfish if you open your heart open your mind and you live a life that is a blessing to other people that's what it says if that draw out thy soul 
to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like the spring of water whose waters fail not the time of blessing is coming for us the Lord has promised quite a lot for us and if we are obedient to the word of God, we are not selfish, we are not covetous, we just walk in the ways of the Lord and we pray as the Lord has taught us and directed us to pray, great will be our blessing in Jesus name. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6 verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Will the Lord do it? Will the Lord bless you? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. This very day, the heavens will be opened unto you. For everyone, there is no exception tonight. The young and the old, the men and the women, the newcomers and our brothers and sisters who have been members of church for a long time. You've been living from hand to mouth. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. I rejoice with you that the windows of heaven are open to you tonight in Jesus name. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask him bread will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him. God will give me good things tonight. I said God will give me good things tonight. He will give you. Give us this day our daily bread. Rise up and tell the Lord. He will satisfy your hunger. He will satisfy your desire. He will satisfy your need. The Lord will bless you tonight. That's why you came. The Lord loves you. And the Lord has been thinking about you. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, we should pray without any fear. We should pray without any restriction because he loves us. And we can tell the Heavenly Father, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, he'll give it to you. Yes, he will supply all your need. He's conscious of your need. He knows the limitation. He knows you need to provide for your family. He knows you need to provide for your children. He knows the need of your life. It's just to come and ask him. And you tell him, give us this day. No day. You'll not miss any day. You'll not miss any blessing for any day. The blessing of the Lord is available. Give us this day. Our daily bread. You are not selfish. Give us. You're not covetous. Give us this day our daily bread. You're not asking for what belongs to other people. You're asking for what belongs to you. And then you're saying, oh Lord, bless the other people too. Bless the other people too. Bless me and bless them. Bless them and bless me. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, the normal bread for our body. The normal food for our body. Normal clothing for our body. No more sustainers for our body. No more strength for our body. Even the children's bread, the healing, the deliverance. Yes, yes, that's included to give us this day, our daily bread. The healing is available. And uh, the deliverance is available. And the provision is available. And the job is available. How can you be job blessing? God says, when the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He wants to provide for you the job. He wants to provide for you all your needs. He wants to meet all your needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. What do you need? To make your life happy. What do you need? To make your life fruitful. What do you need? To make your life satisfactory. What do you need? To make your life fulfilled. Once you decide for other people and you decide for yourself, once you are not selfish, once you are not covetous, once you are not oppressive, once you are willing to open your mind and open your hand and open your heart, 
to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your neighbors, to the brothers and to your sisters. Also, have the mind of Christ. And you have the spirit of God. And you have the willingness to share whatever blessing the Lord gives you. And you're saying, give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. The Lord is willing to satisfy you. The Lord is watching you now. You are in for a miracle. You are, you are in for supernatural supply. You are in for the great, great, great blessing of the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. How about the spiritual bread? How about the spiritual bread? Bread for life eternal. Bread for your spiritual stamina. Bread for your spiritual strength. Bread to strengthen the inner man. The word. The sustainers, spiritual sustainers. Christ himself. He wants to give himself to you. He is the bread of life, the living bread. Evermore give us this bread. Tell the Lord. And he will give it to you. He will give it to you. Bread of life, living bread, spiritual bread. Bread that will strengthen you in the inner man. And then you'll be able to labor for the Lord. You labor in the service of the Lord without getting tired. Give us this day our daily bread. Then you have a commitment to the Lord. If you're going to remain strong spiritually, if you're going to keep the sanctification experience, the holiness experience, the purity of heart, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. The word of His grace, the word of purity, the word of power. That's able to give you an inheritance among them that are made holy, made righteous, sanctified. That's how you keep that sanctification experience. No Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no breakfast. A commitment, a covenant with the Lord. No scripture, no sleep. No scripture, no sleep. No scripture, no sleep in the night. Before you sleep, you go back to the word again. That's how your inner man will be strengthened. That's how your spiritual life will be stable. As you eat the physical food, the natural food, to make your body strong, you take the spiritual food, the word of God, to make your soul, your spirit strong. To make your inner man strong. And when you open the Bible, you'll pray, Lord, give me something from this word. Enrich my life through this word. Make my Christian life better through this word. Challenge me through this word. Fire me up, inspire me through this word. Give me something that will make me strong. Something courageous and bold. Something that will make me courageous and bold in this word. Feed me through this word. Nourish me through this word. Lift me up through this word. Lord, evermore give us this bread of life. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. That should be your prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. You pray that in the morning. The time to pray that prayer. The tone of that prayer. Like a child talking to the father. Like a servant talking to the master. Like a subject talking to the king. Give us this day our daily bread. And in the trust, the trust, believing that as you are prayed genuinely from your heart, the Lord actually will give you this day, that daily bread, the physical bread, the spiritual bread, the bread of life. He'll give it to you. Trust him accept by faith he'll do it ask it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock it shall be opened unto you what's your need temporal need physical need 
earthly need ask it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock knock at the door at the door of mercy is a door of abundance knock the door will be open unto you everyone without exception everyone that has kept receivers he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh shall be opened the lord has given us the assurance if he then being evil know how to give good things to your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give you good things give good things to them that ask him you ask him for physical strength physical stamina you ask him for your healing the children's bread you ask him for the spiritual strength spiritual stamina to be strong in the inner man that's what you're asking for and he will do it he will do it he'll never fail he'll never fail everyone that has kept receivers take in the word believe the word accept the word as you make your demand make that demand in faith believing that this is what the lord said he will do and the lord is going to do it he will never fail Jacob prayed, if Lord you'll go with me and give me bread to eat and bring me back home safely. Then this stone shall become the house of God. I'll build the house of God, the sanctuary of the Lord. And of all that you'll give me, I'll give the tenths of it, my tithes unto you. Believe the Lord, accept that this is what the Lord had said and make a commitment, a covenant with the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. That faithfulness will bring the abundance of the blessings of God upon your life. He cares for us. That's why he taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. He will not disappoint. That's why he taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Is a faithful God, his promises will never fail. He fetched the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years every day. They went out and they gathered the manna. He will not fail. Trust in the Lord. What do you need? According to his promise, make sure you break every yoke, make sure you remove every, every oppression, every attack you're putting on people. Make sure that you remove the captivity you are bringing on people and make sure that the oppression you are causing other people you remove that and then god said if you will do that he himself he will bless you abundantly and then you will be a blessing a great 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 blessing the lord will bless you and then make your channel a blessing trust in the lord trust in the lord with all your heart Stand upon those unchanging promises. The promises are yes and amen. It will not fail. It cannot fail. Trust him. Believe him. Stand unwaveringly on that word. Ask shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. Everyone, everyone, everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You're knocking, the Lord is opening it already. The Lord is showering down the blessing already. As you're knocking, as you're asking the Lord, he cannot fail. Which man of you, if the son shall ask for bread, will he give him a stone? If he will ask for an egg, will he give him a serpent? If he'll ask for a fish, will he give him a scorpion? If you then natural people, human beings, not to give good things to children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask him? He'll give you good things, just ask him. Depend upon the Lord and trust in the Lord and say, Lord, I'm your child. A father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day, this day, this day, our daily bread. We're asking for the blessing today. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. 
Just give yourself fully to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I come for the blessing of the child. I'm a child of God. I'm asking for the blessing you reserve for your children. He will give it to you. Yes, he'll give it. Yes, he'll give it to you. You cannot fail. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Hold on to the promise unwaveringly. Don't shift ground. Don't shift ground. Just say, Lord, I trust you. You are my heavenly father. You are a loving father. You are a compassionate father. You are a faithful father. What I have said you will do, you will do. And I come for that blessing. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Ask him faith, believing. He cares for his own. Ask him faith, believing. He cares for his own. Don't be tired. He blesses those who believe in him. He blesses those who believe in him. And as you believe, standing on the promises of God that cannot fail, then you'll find the blessing being poured into your life, enriching your life, strengthening your soul, giving you spiritual stamina. Is doing it right now. Give us this day a daily bread. You need a job, ask him. You need progress and promotion on that job, ask him. He'll do it. Yes, he will. He has never failed. He says, I'm God, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give us this day our daily bread in jesus name we pray tonight is your night the lord brought you here to bless you he brought you here to pour abundance of blessing upon your life and tonight you will receive in jesus name you see he'll bless you in your body He'll bless you in your family. He'll bless you in your soul. He'll bless you in your spiritual life. Things are turning around tonight in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. You know, sometimes uh, during the week, you know, sometimes it's funny. And uh, you know, some people, but it is Bible study. Is it all right to pray on Monday? Is it all right to be blessed on Monday? Or do we need to wait until Thursday? Go hungry on Monday, go hungry on Tuesday, go hungry on, th on Wednesday, and then Thursday we drag our fainting body to the place for revival and say, God, today is Thursday. Will you bless me today? I'll be blessed on Monday. God will provide for me on Monday. Give us this day on Monday our daily bread. It has come in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand. You are blessed already. This is just a confirmation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know you are a loving Father. 
and all these these are your children they believe on the lord jesus christ oh lord i pray every need in their lives you supply in jesus name will any of your children die of hunger even the animals they don't die of hunger you provide for them the sparrows and the birds of the air you are providing for them they do not die on of hunger jesus died for these your people and they believe on you and they're your children oh lord i pray every abundance that they need you shower on them in jesus name i pray for those who are jobless i claim that job for them right now and I pray, Lord, the job they need that will match them as children of the King, give it unto them in Jesus' name. And Lord, those who have been working faithfully, but they have not been promoted because of the jealousy and the envy and the persecution of the unbelievers, I remove the hand that, hold, that is holding their promotion. Give them the promotion in Jesus' name. And I pray for these, our children, God has blessed you already. And I pray, Lord, in their youth, they are coming to hear the word of God. And I pray that the abundance of heaven and success and achievement give unto them in Jesus' name. I pray for their parents that, Lord, you will provide enough for their parents. They will educate these children. They will bring up these children and their families will be rejoicing in the blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. We know, Lord, is not only food. What if we're married and then we're eating our food all alone and we're eating the bread of affliction, the bread of tears. No child in the family, no happiness in the family. Oh, Lord, I pray all the needs of the families supply in Jesus' name. This special time of the Lord's prayer, I pray every family will remember that this is the time you got your miracle child the barrenness the serenity in your family i cancel it oh lord give them miracle children in jesus name and those lord what will broadly bread do us when you know somebody is 37 39 somebody is 43 and not married yet is going to 47 and not married yet if whatever food they have whatever bread they have they'll be crying on those on, on the bread they'll be wetting the bread with their tears oh lord wipe all their tears away in jesus name whatever is the stumbling block ahead of them that they're not able to have everything that belongs to them oh lord i pray you knock away you knock off the hand of the enemy in jesus name and i pray for those say uh, you have provided bread for them you have provided everything for them they are thanking you i pray oh lord you give them spiritual bread eternal life and lord you give you give their inner man strength in jesus name a kind of strength you give us will never backslide again. A kind of strength you give us will never get discouraged again. A kind of strength you give us will be marching on and moving on in the work of the Lord. Never getting tired, never looking back. Give it to everyone in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we pray the bread you give us, the blessing you give us, the abundance you give us, and the miracles you give us, nobody will steal it away from us. That, Lord, our material blessing, our spiritual blessing, nobody will be able to touch it in Jesus' name. As these, your children go back home and all those people in all the other locations, as they march back home in the joy of the Lord, nothing will disturb their joy no bad news no bad uh, no bad uh, information everything coming upon our lives will be good we'll be getting better every time in jesus name lord i pray as we go to revival next thursday it should be a time of testimony a time of sharing together a time of joy and the blessing will be permanent in our lives in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen i am blessed i am blessed give us this day god bless you